This computer was well before the Mark 8, the Apple 1, the Apple 2. This was designed before 1970. The Mark 8 was 1974, the Apple 1 was 1976, and so was the Apple 2. This was a totally functioning computer that was set on a desk. And so the group at DataPoint feels, and probably rightfully so, that they had the first home computer. They didn't call them personal computers. And this totally programmable with lots of memory, mass storage, and way before anyone else. It was a very nice looking unit, uh, well advanced with networking capability, a lot of software, and just a, a fascinating story that they don't get a lot of exposure to. There is some books written about it, and I've done some blogging on this, and we've been in contact with Jack Frasinato, who was one of the designers of this computer. And um, they feel they don't get enough credit for having the first home computer. And after all, it is a whole computer you can sit on your desk and use. It wasn't a microprocessor chip in it. It had discrete logic, but it was an 8-bit computer. Wonderful product. The company itself had up to 9,000 employees at one time, so billions of dollars worth of product, but eventually went out of business. And by the way, just as a historical thing, uh, Rackspace, which is over in Blacksburg, occupies the data point company headquarters in San Antonio, Texas now, and the rock space people have been over to my museum. So the history sort of continues for data point. There are lots of fascinating computers here in our collection and in the, in the museum. This is a computer that was designed in the late 60s before microprocessor chips. This is a data point 2200. Um, the data point company was located in San Antonio, Texas, which was not Silicon Valley. People couldn't believe a computer could come out of San Antonio, Texas. A little bit about this computer. It was designed to replace the teletype, which is an electromechanical keyboard, printer, paper tape punch. This is all electronic. In fact, it was designed, it even had the same physical footprint. But it's a totally complete computer with keyboard, display, mass storage, and I'll take the cover off here just to get a little bit of a look inside. Lots of interesting things about this. See, this computer was well before the Mark 8, the Apple 1, Apple 2. This was the late 60s, very early 70s, where the Mark 8 was 74 and the Apple 1, Apple 2 were 1976. This was a totally operating computer, self-contained, and the uh, first real user of this computer was a chicken farmer. The chicken farmer programmed this computer to write payroll checks because the process at that time was you'd send the hours to corporate, they'd write a check, send it, send it back. It took two weeks for people to get their paycheck. Well, if they could write payroll checks on location, they could get paid the same day. So. Some of the programmers at Pillsbury, which is where the chicken farming operation was at Pillsbury, uh, wrote some software to write payroll checks. So this computer was used in that sense. Now, there's a lot of interesting stories about this computer. The folks that designed it consider themselves to be the first ones to have a home computer. And certainly, you see, it's a small computer, sits on a desk, works very nicely. But a more interesting story for me is that the 8-bit computer inside, not a microprocessor, but it is an 8-bit computer. Uh, these folks, Jack Frasinato and his uh, associates, went to Intel around 1970 and asked them, would you make a single chip with the logic of this computer on it, which would be a microprocessor chip? Uh, the folks at Intel weren't really not that interested in doing it, but they said, well, for $50,000, we'll design a chip. That chip went on to become uh, well known, but the story also goes on that it took them so long to design the chip that the data point people just decided to continue building the computer around this logic it had rather than using the microprocessor chip. So they, by the way, the data point people also went to Texas Instrument and asked them to design a chip unknown to Intel. They didn't know that. Well. When they continued building this computer, they decided they really didn't want the microprocessor chip, so they went back to Intel. And uh, the short of the story is that they gave up their 50,000, rather they... <laughs> and that's my cell phone, which is normally on vibrate. Okay. 
Okay. We can pick the story up. Huh? We'll pick it up. Yeah, Let's pick it up. This computer is that the 8-bit computer inside was uh, one that uh, Jack Frasinato and his associates at Datapoint went to Intel to ask them, would you design a single chip, which would be a microprocessor chip, around this logic? They weren't real interested at Intel, but they did say, well, for $50,000, we'll design the chip. Unknown to Intel, the data point people also went to Texas Instruments and asked them to design a similar chip. Well, Intel was so slow in designing the chip, and the TI chip never worked, Texas Instruments chip never worked very well. So data point, we just went on, continued to build the computer as they had around discrete logic, not using the microprocessor chip. And the story from Jack Frasinato, who uh, said he did not agree with this, but they went back to Intel and instead of paying them the $50,000 for the design, they gave up the rights to the microprocessor chip and didn't pay the $50,000. Now that chip became the first 8-bit Intel microprocessor chip, the 8008 microprocessor. So it was a very historic chip. And uh, in the early 90s led to some litigation of who designed the first microcomputer. There was a lawsuit between Texas Instrument, who had been designing this chip as well as uh, Intel. And I don't really know the outcome of that litigation. I think it might even be uh, probably well known, but it wasn't discussed too much. But we actually had a bit of part ourselves in that litigation, furnishing a few things for it. But it, the design of this chip with uh, this Intel and TI resulted in some litigation uh, years later in the early 90s between TI and um, Texas Instrument and Intel. So fascinating computer, uh, totally self-contained, billions of dollars worth of these sold, as many as 9,000 people in the company in San Antonio, Texas. So we had a little Silicon Valley in the early, 17, uh, early 1970s in San Antonio nobody knew about hardly. Fascinating computer. This is the Selby computer, which was advertised in March of 1975, which was a few months before John Titus had his article in Radio Electronics on the Mark 8. So this is arguably one of the first uh, microcomputer kits available. I'm not sure the full kit was available when they advertised it, but Nat Wadsworth and his associates designed this computer. Uh, they sold about 200 of them. There's only about eight or 10 of them known to still exist. We've got a beautiful example of the Selby computer here in, in the museum. It had five or six cards. This one's actually custom made with some other cards. And one thing, notice it's in a wooden frame. People that built these early microcomputers used all sorts of construction materials because they didn't come with a case. And people were so anxious to have their own computer, they did a lot of things that we wouldn't consider doing today. Uh, this computer was actually a 8008 computer microprocessor, had a switch register, keyboard, and came with a manual. Like I said, Nat Wadsworth was a major designer on this. I've got all the documentation for this, assembly manual, software manual, computer manual, and even more so, there were four or five newsletters on the Selby, and we have all of them here in the collection, all of them that were written. So we have a really wonderful uh, representation of the Selby computer, which was first marketed in March of 1975. This is a wonderful computer, and we're certainly delighted to have it in our collection. Can we do the whole thing over? Uh, just, I'll tell you what. Yeah, this is a wonderful example of the uh, Selby computer. It has six cards keyboard and so forth and it has some custom interfacing over here that the gentleman that designed uh, built this computer uh, added to it. It's a very fine example. There are only about uh, eight or ten of these Selby computers known to exist and we're happy to have one in our museum here along with uh, all the manuals and uh, newsletters and everything that goes with this computer. We have a very nice uh, total display of the Selby microcomputer.